This week, World Rugby have announced that they will be discussing new law changes on the 9th of May. One of the laws proposed directly disadvantages teams with good scrums, i.e. the Springboks. But what if I told you Rassi Rasmus was one step ahead of World Rugby all this time? So if you haven't seen any of my previous videos, what law am I talking about? Well, they're trying to get rid of the option to take another scrum from a free kick awarded after a scrum. Now, in a video previously in this week, we discussed the, a couple of loopholes that teams with weaker, str weaker scrums could go about. We said that what's stopping teams with weaker scrums just giving away that free kick so that they don't have to scrum. And then the game of rugby union starts to look a whole lot like the game of rugby league where there's no scrums and there's no lineouts. Now, World Rugby have defended themselves by saying that this is for an entertainment factor so that there is isn't so much dead time but rugby is a game for all shapes and sizes and a scrum is a big part of that game for the Springboks it's what won them the 2019 and the 2023 World Cup and as a South African or a Springbok fan you can't help but feel like that World Rugby are trying to target the Springboks so that, so that they don't win a third back-to-back -back World Cup but what they didn't account for is Rassi Rasmus the genius behind the spring box. Now Mark Kiahana, a reporter for Times Live, wrote something that I found very, very interesting. He wrote this, Rassi Rasmus has preempted World Rugby's law amendments that negate the Springboks' forward dominance by investing in dynamic backs. Kiohano argues that Erasmus foresaw the initiatives and, as SA's director of rugby, had encouraged the introduction of Kirtley Orenser and Kanan Moody into the Bok backline, while selecting Damien Willemser at fullback and flyhoff Marnie LeBoc. Additionally to this, Rassi has also appointed a, basically a whole new coaching staff, Dwayne Vermeulen two-time Rugby World Cup winner as to help with the forwards. He's introduced Jakub Paper to help with the refereeing side of things. And he has introduced ex-All Blacks playmaker Tony Brown as an attack coach, which further emphasizes the fact that Rassi Rasmus saw this coming. Now we're going to dive a little bit deeper into this, but I first want to just emphasize this point that Rassi Erasmus is a genius when it comes to rugby. He was the reason why we won the 2019 and the 2023 World Cup. He innovates on the game. We saw it in the 2019 World Cup when he came up with the bomb squad, which ultimately brought on a completely new pack of forwards, just as good as the first pack of forwards that were on the field to then manipulate and play against fatigued players on the rugby pitch, which gave the, to the Springboks a whole new dominance up front. This then got expanded on in the 2023 World Cup and slightly before that when the nuke squad came out, the 7-1 split that we had never seen in rugby. It was, it's what helped the Springboks uh, beat the All Blacks 35-7 at Twickenham just before the Rugby World Cup. We saw it implemented again in the 2023 Rugby World Cup. So Rassi Rasmus is always thinking. He always has these innovative plans and I'm sure he thought that when the 7-1 split came about, when the nuke squad came about, that there would be problems with it. I mean, we saw pundits and ex-players complaining about the nuke squad, that it wasn't safe or part of rugby or that it's not in the spirit of the game. But Rassi Rasmus only cares about winning a Rugby World Cup and that's exactly what he did. And now he's probably foreseen that World Rugby would have a problem with this. So he started investing into backline players, into more of an attacking coaching staff. While South Africa are quite forward dominant, he's now got Cheslin Colby, he's now got Kirtley Orenza, he's now got Kane and Moody, all of these utility backs that are much smaller, that are much more focused on attacking style of play. Damien Willemser, putting him at number 15, he normally plays 10 or 12, but putting him at number 15 gives the Springboks so many more options. He's that utility back. Think of a France stain that can play absolutely any, anywhere. And now bringing in Tony Brown, an ex-playmaker for the All Blacks, is just enhancing that attacking capability so that if the forward dominance that South Africa showed in the 2019 and 2023 World Cup gets taken away somehow by World Rugby, and I'm sure he didn't know how this was going to be taken away or how World Rugby was going to nuke 
the nuke squad. But now we see that if this law change goes through, weaker scrums will get the advantage, which in my opinion isn't part of rugby. You need to, it's, it's a physical game up front, big players all the time, heavy contact. And if we take away scrummaging, then we just have rugby league. So yes, if this law change goes through, I don't think it'll be in the spirit of rugby. I get that they're trying to increase the entertainment factor of rugby to try and bring in a new audience, but rugby is entertaining with the scrums. And Rassi Rasmus, being Rassi Rasmus, probably foresaw this, which is why there's been a lot more invested into the backline in terms of the coaching staff and in terms of the players that he's picked to play for South Africa. We've also seen with the alignment squad that there's a lot of youngsters in the backline that are coming in, like Asasha Ngumazulu, who again is, a, is very much a utility back that can play anywhere. We saw him include four scrum offs in one game in the World Cup. Rassi Rasmus is always thinking, and I do think we need to give him credit because I don't think he often gets the credit. We often just sit back and let him take the wheel, but he is a genius and he's definitely, he's definitely seen this coming, which is why he's been experimenting with the four scrum offs, which is why he's experimenting with these younger players in the back line. And I think whatever World Rugby throws at the Springboks, Rassi Rasmus has a plan for it. While I might not agree with what World, uh, World Rugby are doing, it is what it is and you have to adapt to the best teams do and that's why the Springboks have won back-to-back -back World Cups. As always, let me know what you guys think in the comments about this possible law change, about Rassi Rasmus being a genius and maybe foreseeing this or maybe it was all just luck, but I don't think so. Let me know, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave this video a like and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take it easy. Peace.